Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto and in this video we're going to continue learning how to program it with Facilino and particularly we're going to uh, learn how to use flow control instructions. That means instructions to control the flow of our code. That means branching like if else uh, instructions that also loops uh, and, uh, and some delays as well. So, uh, this presentation is based on three exercises. The first one is a hysteresis control, which is a classic example of a temperature control. I will explain later. Also, we will have an exercise that the idea is to wait until something happens and also if something happens during some kind of continuous execution of, of our code, then we, can want to ex we want to exit uh, from this loop and break it. And also, we're going to implement also in an alarm effect with the buzzer. So, in hysteresis control, the idea is that uh, there's a signal that uh, takes a value between two, let's say, thresholds. One of them, if the signal uh, is higher than a given threshold, then we set on, uh, uh, let's say in this case, some kind of actuator. In this case, it's an LED, but it could be like in a temperature, if, if the temperature is higher than something, then we can switch on our fan. And if the temperature is below something, then we want to switch it off. But there's a value in between these two thresholds in which we don't want to change our previous controls, so we avoid switching continuously between one single threshold, which would be the case with a normal if condition. So, in this case, what we do is we use the if else condition here or if condition else if condition and then we check that if the measurement of the analog signal is higher than in this case 500 and we have a variable, we have defined a variable which is a state that controls the state of our controller or that, that sets the state of our controller then if the state is, is it's false then we will set the LED to high and then set the state as true. So then we don't enter here even when the, when the value of the signal is still uh, lower than 500. We don't enter here anymore until we go below to the number, in this case, 200. In this case, if the signal goes below this value then, and the state is true, then the LED will be low and then the uh, state will be set to off. Okay, it's a state machine uh, that we have implemented somehow here. So let me uh, run the example so you will see how it works. So uh, let me start the simulation. Okay, in this case, because of the position of the potentiometer, uh, 500 is more or less in this in this position of the wiper. So because of the position of the potentiometer, the the LED is on, and only until I move to 200, which will be more or less about this position, the LED will be off. So during this range, and this range, and this range, and then there's a position here in which is on, and then it won't turn off. On sorry again until I overpass the 500 value, which is somewhere here. So, during this position here, it's off, off, and from here, we'll start writing here. Yeah, and we'll be on. That's the classic behavior when we use, uh, that we use for temperature control, for instance. Let me return back to the presentation. So, in this second example, the idea is that we want to wait until a signal becomes true or false, in this case it's uh, low, which is false, yeah. We want to wait for that, which is uh, the action of pressing the, the switch button connected to pin D2. And then, in that time, we start blinking an LED connected to pin D12, yeah, we start blinking the LED, and we do that forever until there's another condition here that uh, detects that we have pushed the LED D3 and then we break out from this while loop here. Otherwise, it will be blinking the LED uh, forever. So, let me show how it works. So, this is uh, 
the button connected to pin D2, and this is the button connected to pin D12, D3, and this is the, the LED connected to pin D12. So if I press this button, right now it's waiting, we press this button, so if I press this button, the LED starts blinking, and it will be in this state forever because of the while loop, and when I press this one, I will exit from this state and will stop blinking, sorry, press, stop blinking, and then I need to press again to this button, so if I want to repeat again the same operation, and if I press here, I stop blinking. And the third example, it's an alarm effect that will generate, uh, in this case, a varying frequency using a buzzer, okay? And in this case, what we want to do is we uh, want to start with, or we want to do some kind of uh, for loop, or in this case, it's a while loop, but it's a, an equivalent, that we want to increase uh, every time we repeat something in, within this loop, we want to increase uh, the frequency of the buzzer uh, until we reach um, a given amount of frequency. And then we want to do the uh, the opposite let's say um frequency so we slow down we uh, we uh sorry we start with uh with a different uh, frequency or with the same frequency and we finish with a different frequency but the increment is different in the end the combination of these two uh, instructions will basically uh, generate some kind of alarm effect so this is uh, the code as uh, or sorry sorry this is the the circuit that I have used for this uh, exercise, in which is a buzzer connected to uh, a resistor that is connected to pin D5. And if I press the simulation, the, 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 the sound of the, uh, of the buzzer, it's a little bit weird here because of the simulator, but in a real buzzer, in a real circuit, will sound as an alarm effect. Okay, so uh, in this presentation I have introduced how to use flow control instructions. Thank you very much.